What's going on guys? So tonight I actually am finishing up a little bit of work that I started doing for some engine mounts. So this actually, I pulled all these dimensions off of um, a drawing that I got online and they were spot on. The measurements were good. It was for a small block Chevy, uh, nothing fancy there, but I was just happy that the dimensions actually panned out to be right. So these are the brackets I made originally to hang off the frame but I think I'm actually going to land these on the engine plates. I'm probably gonna look to get a little thicker material for this. This is only 11 gauge. It would do the job, honestly, um, if I built it all correctly. I'll probably go with um, some quarter plate at the block side of things and then build these up. The 11 gauge pieces here for the um, actual mount to hang off the frame or hang off the block is plenty fine actually but um where it actually spans across the bolts on the block from here to here uh and then down to the third one i'm a little i'm a little concerned that it'll be a little flexible in here um this motor while it's not some beast it's not a slouch either uh so uh you know just want to make sure i keep the stuff stout enough to do the job so anyway that's what i'm working on this evening And yes, for those of you that are keen to know what that uh, noise was, that was indeed my belt sander. And yes, I did just sharpen my tungsten there. And yes, I did, in fact, contaminate my tungsten by doing so. However, it's not nearly contaminated as it was. <laughs> so, again, I'm not a pro at this. Ah, so much nicer. Ooh. There we go. Some practice and I'll be quite a bit better. I used to be pretty decent when I did it on a daily basis. I used to weld Hellers quite some time ago. Used to rebuild outboard and big inboard propellers. Uh, silicon bronze and stainless steel, aluminum. I used to really like welding, TIG welding aluminum. It's been so long since I've done that stuff. Um, I have tried it here and there. I am no good at it anymore, that's for sure. That's not terrible. At least they're clean beads. It's really not terrible. That's good. <clears throat> now I'm gonna weld this side, of course, and it's just gonna draw over and I'm gonna have to knock it around, but whatever. Um, actually, I say that, and there's a bevel on my square. You see that? I can probably secured back down again so it's in a decent shape these squares are actually machine feet off of um, some machines that I used to build that we used to take them off of and they were perfect squares machine squares so of course I snatched them up for this exact reason stuff like this all right let's try this again Getting warm. Woo, it's hot. A 
let that cool like that. I do need to tack up the end here. Let that cool like this in the fixture. Uh, because this will still warp. It'll pull one side or the other. However, if you keep it in the... If you let it cool, your chances of that happening, uh, the amount it happens, is far less. So, we'll let this cool for a few minutes and get back to this. All right, full disclosure, I welded that second tab on the wrong side of the line I had scrapped. So, I just had to pull it all apart, grind everything down, clean it all up again. Now we're back to square one with this. See if we can make it, get it right this time. Much cleaner weld this time anyway. I'm staying on this corner for a second only because I had a grind and cut this off and it opened up my bevel that I had for a weld to hide in. And now I'm trying to fill it back in so it doesn't look stupid. Basically, I'm trying to salvage this part. All right. going to be a little fun to weld and control so I think what I'm going to end up having to do is pull all my fixturing loose and just take weld it up and I don't know we'll see maybe I can afford to get this fixturing in here somehow so it'll hold some stuff stable because um, if you have not TIG welded before um, what will absolutely happen very quickly is it will pull on you pretty dramatically if you don't have something holding it in place. Um, if I wanted to screw around with this a little bit, I would show you that the amount that it actually pulls. These are, um, if you're looking at these shape vice grips right now and you're wondering what the story is with them, they fell off a truck and a friend of mine fell them out, found them out in the street. But I can tell you, they're some of the best ones I've ever had. They are very, very useful. Um, yep. So I just stuck that <laughs> I stuck that steel rule back there as a shim because this thing is not square when it comes side to side. But what I've got tacked up here, or what I've got mocked up here, should um, help me out. Let's see if we can do this decently. Failing on some, uh, normal welding basics here and that is my range of motion I didn't double check that I actually had full range of motion to make this entire pass before I started and sure enough I had to start and stop there and it probably affected my finished product it's not terrible but as I started I said when I started I'm not that great at this still not Still not terrible. We'll let that cool for a minute. Then we'll pull it apart and flip it over. All right, this ought to be fun. I gotta weld the inside. Yeah, this is not gonna be fun. 
Nope, not at all, not at all. Let's see if I can reposition here. I might be able to make this work. My fingers are damn close to all this bracketry and I'm telling you it is hot. Damn it, that's warm in there. All right, hey, I managed without screwing too much stuff up. Pretty flat. Woo, just hit my TIG pedal. Nice, I can't, can't complain about that. It's pretty clean. I am not touching this. Like an idiot. It's pretty clean, nice and straight. And I will show you my, this distance was determined by, and actually I can see one ear, this ear right here on this side towards me is folded outward. I'll have to knock it around. But honestly, it's not a big deal. But again, I'll give you where I came up with that, which is the steel bushing that goes into, oh, whoops, actually I got it damn close. Look at that, that's nice. This bushing is the steel bushing that's the center of the entire engine mount. And in moving it around over here, I've displaced or misplaced the rubber portion. But anyway, that's what this is. That's what this was determined by. Um, this being in here won't allow the rubber to be crushed. All right, so here's where we're at. This is all TIG welded up. This plate will mount to the engine. This distance, and it's actually tightening up as it cools, uh, which is perfectly fine, was based on the steel bushing that goes inside the mount. So, nothing crazy here, but this goes inside here. And this distance keeps, this steel bushing keeps, um, when you tighten it all up, from crushing this rubber insert on either side uh, which is really important you also need to grease these when you put them together uh, it keeps everything moving like it should but anyway this as soon as it cools down will mount to the engine which we made this very well like an idiot try to hang it let me see if i can get you guys a shot to see that all right well Parts are hot still, however, typical fashion for any American, I'm impatient. I don't want instant gratification. Ooh, yep, it's warm. <laughs> so, you can grab another bolt. None of these bolts are gonna get us where we need. They're all too long, honestly, but, um, You can kind of get the idea now. Let's see if I can knock this bushing together. Actually, let me just shove it in the vise real quick and push it all together. This is not the opportune location for a big heavy duty vise on top of a plastic topped toolbox. It's really does not the best scenario. But, since I have an entire chassis welded to my welding table where this is normally mounted, this will have to be. Here's what we got now. Bushing inside, all together. And the other thing I need is some 5 8 bolts. These things are 5 8 holes. Like they're pretty massive, honestly. Which is probably why, again, I'm gonna probably revisit this mount. It's, it's not heavy enough. But for the sake of what we're trying to do right now, I will show you what's going on. How this is all supposed to fit. All right, so 
throw another bolt in here. I did have to oversize these holes just one size on these plates that I cut. I want to say that like the distance was 3.48 from top to bottom and I don't know whatever it was side to side. But when I did that and I cut a 3 8 hole for the 3 8 bolts, of course, I had to clean up the hole for the 3 8 hole, uh, bolts. But then when I stuck it up here, um, it was still just a little bit tight. Honestly, that probably doesn't have to do with the measurement as much as it has to do with my plasma table and how accurate it cuts. Um, and my cut angle and so on and so forth. So that's probably what actually caused the slight misalignment. So now that this thing's loosely in place where it's going to be, this bushing will go up in the middle like so. All right. And there you go. Now, let's see if I can get you guys in here close enough. Now you can kind of see what I've got going on. So this will be here. This will be all bolted to the block. And then from there, I will make a mount or bracket to come from the bushing, the steel housing of the bushing to the chassis. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna use. I'll probably try to do something cool. Who knows though, it may end up just a piece of DOM tubing or something. But um, that's what uh, tonight's plan was. Again, I'll probably revisit this with some quarter inch plate, at least here. May very well do these in quarter plate as well, uh, which is why I'm not going to mess with the inside frame rail mount yet, because all of that will, of course, push this out another eighth of an inch. And I don't want to, I just don't want to get it wrong. So that's what's up. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.